Hey everybody, it's Matt with Double M Farms and Homestead. Um, it's Thursday, it's cooler outside, and my wife, Mrs. M, is working from home. So she had, this, she said, that's where I have to go. It's outside. So we're gonna go outside and we're gonna talk about some chickens. Be right back. Living on the farm, living on the farm, living on the farm, well, doggy. Hey everybody, uh, it's Matt again, I'm back. Uh, took the old John Deere over here, it's a pretty good walk from here, uh, from the front. <clears throat> Chickenology. My chickens are free range and we have hawks. How do you make that work? I take my chicks from the time I get them as little baby chicks. I put them in a brooder. They stay in there with a heat lamp until about a week and a half. About a week and a half, bear in mind, I live in Florida. Um, at about a week and a half, they're gonna start scratching in their brooder. The food that spills out of their feeder, you'll notice they're gonna be scratching and eating it off the ground instead of trying to eat it out of a little feeder. It's easier. It's the way that they were made to feed. So when I start seeing that, when I start seeing that behavior, I take those chickens from a brooder, unlike everybody else on YouTube says, I take them from that little brooder and I put them in a four foot wide, eight foot long by roughly 20 inches tall tractor. And it's on the ground right beside my big coop. And you say, oh my gosh, you're putting baby chicks on the ground at a week and a half old. They're gonna die. No, they're not. Right now it's hot. Um, it's not hot in this canopy. It's in the upper 80s. That's about the warmest it ever gets. Chicken's internal temperature is 101 degrees. Uh, they're not gonna overheat in 85, 90 degree temperature. They're just not gonna do it because I make sure they have water. I also make sure they have cover. They either have cover in the in the um, way of being in the tractor and getting the wind, the crosswinds come through from the chicken wire I have there. But anyway, they stay in there until they can either dig out or fly out. When they dig out, they're free. When they fly out, they're free. And you know what they do? It's the most amazing thing in the world. You wouldn't believe it. They join the rest of the flock. <gasps> I know it's hard to believe, but chickens actually will join the flock if you let them out to do so. Otherwise, they're just gonna live in a ground tractor and learn not to be afraid of anything. And as soon as you put them on your chicken farm, they're gonna die of heart failure. Um, this is the way chickens need to learn to fear the world. In the real world, in the old days, when my, well, dad, I don't mean when the dinosaurs were here, but when my dad was young, he said they had chickens on their farm and the hens would go away for a while, but grandma would say, they'll be back. And they always showed up and they would show up with some baby chicks. They didn't have incubators at the farm. They couldn't afford them. Um, they raised their own chicks because they couldn't really afford to buy chicks all the time. They couldn't afford to lose them for sure, but they had a way. They knew the value of a rooster. You hear these roosters crowing behind me? That is a signal for many things. Too many to get into today. We'll talk about rooster crowing another day. But when my chickens can fly out of their tractor, they're free and they join the flock. That's what chickens do. When they join the flock, they learn that when that chicken growls, they need to run hide. When that chicken crows after he growls, they really need to go hide because he's seen a hawk. He's seen a person that he doesn't know. He's seen a dog. If they see Bubba, my big rooster, if they see him jump up in the air and boo, pop them spurs into a hawk, they know to run hide. But my chickens understand that they are chickens. They haven't been kept cooped up on the ground for 25 weeks 
lived their entire adolescent life without the ability to acknowledge or respond to fear. When I hear about people losing chicks, losing 50 chicks to hawks because of, um, you know, just nature, I'm sorry, but that's not the way it works. You don't lose 50 chickens in a very short period of time to hawks, not unless you've got an abundance of hawks. And I'm sorry, people, last time I checked, they're in danger. So raise your chickens right. Put them on the ground as soon as you can. Get them out of that tractor as soon as you can and let them be chickens. Let them learn to work with the roosters. Let them learn to work with the mother hens and they will be the best birds you've ever had. They'll be the healthiest birds you've ever had and they'll be happy and you'll be happy because you're not constantly having to deal with sick birds or hurt birds because you're gonna have healthy birds. I hope something that we've talked about today helped you. If it has, comment below. If you don't agree with me, comment below. I got thick skin. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. Don't troll me and beat me up, but I'm just saying, this is my opinion. This is the way I run our farm. If you have a different way of doing it that may help me, let me know. That's the reason why we do what we do. Smash that like button. Subscribe, please. We work really hard out here to keep this place looking great, trying to make it look better. We've got more birds coming. I've got 48 in the incubator. I've got rangers coming the 10th of June. I've got buff Orpingtons coming. We have got all kinds of things going on. It's so exciting. So please stay tuned, like, subscribe, hit that notification button so you'll know when we have new material coming out. And guys, thank you so much for just watching. Um, it means everything in the world. So as always, for Mrs. M and Matt at Double M Farm and Homestead, God bless and take care till next time. Living on the farm, living on the farm, living on the farm.